and and what that is is it's the sum total of human knowledge being daily augmented and the fury with which people put their thing on the internet everything from you know how grandma's recovering from her stroke to uh i visited a language site the other night that had uh, 122 syllabuses for 122 languages that were philological engines for searching these languages. I got there through the Vonich manuscript site. Yes, that all still goes on. Uh, that community is at work. So apparently we will not rest until all space and all time is brought down into, for all practical purposes, a single point. And this is an idea that has been around in various forms since at least the 16th century. I mean, it's the alchemical idea of the philosopher's stone, a universal panacea, a medicine which makes you wise, immortal, all-seeing, all-knowing, all-good. Uh, <coughs> but interestingly, conceived as an artifact of technology conceived as something brought into being through the effort of a, a technological worker in concert, in resonance uh, with the intention of nature, which is to do the same thing. The human world is simply a catalyst for nature's intentions. We are speeding up nature's program of dimensional transcendence. Nina. It is what it, it it is that, and it is in a sense the Jungian unconscious, but no longer unconscious. In a sense, what we're saying is, you know, we all before the internet, you were who you are, you knew what you knew, and you knew there was a great deal that you didn't know. You had once known it, but forgotten it, or never learned it, but somebody somewhere knew it. Uh, and because we had this vast, dark companion, the unconscious, bad things keep jumping out of it. Uh, it was remarkable to me that it, throughout the Cold War period, a, a planet ruled by carnivorous monkeys filled with ideological hatreds, under immense economic and social pressure, and yet nobody ever used atomic weapons except once, the, the two Japanese instances. And in a sense, they don't count because they didn't know what it was. They had to use it to see what it was. And once they saw what it was, remarkable restraint set in. Uh, I would never have guessed that we would have been capable. I mean, remember how deep the fear of the Soviet Union was. Remember that for 35 years, a thermonuclear strike was a possibility within a half an hour of any undue movement on the other side. And yet, somehow we got uh, through that. So there is in the human animal an effort to awaken. You know, it was um, it was H.P. Uh, no, no, it was H.G. Wells who said history is a race between education and catastrophe. And, you know, it is a, it, 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 it's, it, it's a white knuckle enterprise. You know, catastrophe edges inches ahead, education moves ahead. Uh, and again, if it were a level playing field, I'd be betting on catastrophe because I believe that nature favors the good, the true, and the beautiful. I've got all my money on education. I think we'll make it, but I think we have to scare ourselves to death in order to keep focused. You know, we're, we're primates and we don't really dig in and get rolling until we're painted into a corner. Yeah, man. 
I guess the answer is to you have to somehow make it your friend. You have to make it your friend. Uh, there are there are ways to do that. Actually, I made a little list. You played right into my hands. Uh, uh, the the first and probably oldest friend, older even than than psychedelics, is dreams. Uh, dreams are hugely important. Uh, I was in Australia in February and I did a lot of reading up before I went down. Uh, the aboriginals of Australia are, have been at the cultural enterprise for a long, long time along a different path than the rest of us. I mean, I've spent time with Amazon tribes and with people in Central Asia and yes, they're funky, and yes, they're different, but these Australian Aboriginals are on to something quite other. Uh, many people barely open their eyes. Uh, people sit silently. People don't talk. This again relates to what we said about language. In Australia, among these people, you get the feeling that they don't talk because they're not sure it's here to stay. If, if an aboriginal wants to communicate something to you, they would far rather walk with you a half mile into the bush and point at it than to simply describe it back at camp. So uh, the dream time and the Jungian unconscious and the conscious, the unconscious made conscious by the internet begin to sound like the same things. I previously didn't have much interest in the Australian Aboriginals because I was slightly irritated by reliant on psychedelics. And so it was like, it was like, what am I supposed to do with these people? They're clearly very loaded and very far out. And how do they do that without drugs? It, it was paradigm agonizing to me. <laughs> well, it turns out that they just uh, are better at keeping secrets than the people in the Amazon. There is a revolution breaking over ethnobotany. Uh, we have been saying for decades that South America was the most hallucinogen rich ecology on the planet and why was that and wasn't it fascinating and so forth and so on. In the next 18 months, uh, some Australian ethnobotanists and, uh, and trippers are going to publish data that shows that the Australian Aboriginal worldview is entirely running on DMT. These acacias, this gum tree ecology that stretches from Queensland uh, down to the south coast uh, is replete with DMT. It's simply that the Aboriginal culture is even more secretive than other culture, other Aboriginal cultures in other parts of the world. And only very, very slowly is this information uh, uh, being let out. So dreams are one of the great friends of the imagination. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, basically. And there'll be more. It's not for me to take the thunder. Very good people have hundreds and hundreds of pages about to be published, and they've got the data, and they've done the analysis. Uh, yeah. Well, I pretty much take the position that there may be people who can do it on the Nash, but there's no technique. It's something you have to be born to, and there's no culture that can do it. I think throughout the human population, there may be one person in a hundred who has a, a futuristic set of synapses. Because I, I occasionally, in a group like this, somebody will come up to me and say, well, I've never taken a psychedelic drug, but I know exactly what you're talking about, and I see visions and so forth and so on. I used to just think that these people were nutcases.